Modern animals come in all different shapes and sizes. The smallest on our planet is the bumblebee bat, weighing just 2 grams. And the largest is the blue whale, weighing up to 200 tons. What makes mammals unique from other groups of animals is their ability to feed their young milk, maintain their body temperature, and have fur or hair covering their bodies. They dominate our world, reaching all corners of the globe and living on land, in the sea, and in the air. But this wasn't always the case. Before the mass extinction of the dinosaurs at the end of the Mesozoic era, reptiles ruled the world. The first mammals to appear were Morgonugodontids. These were around on Earth 210 million years ago. They managed to survive the land of the dinosaurs by remaining small and largely going unnoticed. They were about the size of a shrew. But despite their diminutive size, these mammals went on to become one of the most diverse groups of animals ever to have roamed the Earth. They evolved into the vast array of mammals that we know and love today. But could modern-day mammals survive the Mesozoic? The world during the Mesozoic was a very different place from today. The era included the Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous periods. It was a time when there was a huge amount of geological change. At the beginning of the Mesozoic, the landmass Pangaea was surrounded by the Super Ocean Panthalassa and the Paleotethes and subsequent Tethys Oceans. By the middle of the era, this supercontinent had broken up into the northern landmass called Laurasia and the southern landmass called Gondwana. Then, by the end of the Mesozoic, the Earth was more recognizable as current-day continents began to form and move into the positions we recognize today. This geological activity changed the planet forever. The climate was warmer than it is today. Initially, the large supercontinents were arid in their center, with large deserts expanding across them. But when they began to break up, the surrounding seas created a more humid climate and more moisture in the air, which changed the flora. The levels of carbon dioxide were around 16 times higher than they are today, which created a greenhouse effect. The global temperature was on average between 6 and 9 degrees warmer than it is today. Even though it is considered a hot period in our Earth's history, throughout the 186 million years of the Mesozoic, the temperatures fluctuated between hotter and cooler periods. Today, some mammals live in some of the hottest places on Earth, meaning they would likely have survived the temperatures that the dinosaurs were used to. Some of the following are a testament to how hardy some modern-day mammals can be. The critically endangered African wild ass survives in the Dalal region of northern Ethiopia, where temperatures soar to 120 degrees Fahrenheit or 49 degrees Celsius. They can drink a lot of water very quickly in one go. Their large ears disperse some of their body heat, and their metabolisms fluctuate to adapt to the conditions. Iran's Loot Desert is considered the hottest place on Earth, where NASA has recorded a record-breaking temperature of 159.3 degrees Fahrenheit or 70.7 degrees Celsius. Although it appears to be hell on Earth, the Rupel's Fox calls this place home, surviving by effectively conserving its water, hunting in the cool of night, shedding concentrated urine to conserve more water, having low metabolic rates to save energy, and a small body size to dissipate the heat. Another mammal adapted to surviving hotter temperatures is Australia's greater bilby. This animal lives in areas where the mercury has been known to reach 157 degrees Fahrenheit or 69 degrees Celsius. They survive by digging deep burrows underground, some as deep as 7 feet and as long as 10 feet. So, it seems that some of our modern-day mammals are highly adaptable and can survive high temperatures. They have evolved to do so, and if placed back in time during the Mesozoic, the warmer temperatures would unlikely phase them. Of course, there are plenty of current mammals that are adapted to just the opposite. The likes of polar animals would not survive in a world without ice and where temperatures soar. Every adaptation, whether physical or behavioral, is designed to help them survive in a cold environment. And not only would their prey be unavailable to them in a warm climate, but lacking the ability to cool themselves down, they would overheat very quickly. As far as climate goes, some modern-day mammals could have survived the Mesozoic, but would there have been enough for them to eat? The African wild ass that can survive in the heat eats grasses, bark, and leaves. During the Mesozoic, as the carbon dioxide levels rose, vegetation began to change. 
At the beginning of the era, it was largely sparse and consisted mostly of conifers and cycads. These would not provide suitable nutrition for wild asses. Flowering plants, including grasses on which the ass grazes, didn't appear until the Cretaceous period, towards the end of the Mesozoic. There was no ice at the poles, and the temperature difference from north to south was relatively unchanged like nowadays. This meant that vegetation spread far and wide, not inhibited by the ice we see today. Although grasses spread across the globe, it wasn't until after the Mesozoic that the flowering plants dominated. A large herbivorous creature like the wild ass may not find enough food to sustain it during the Mesozoic. The Rupel's fox, also adapted to hotter climates, is mostly insectivorous. During the Mesozoic era, many of today's modern insects evolved. It seems that there would be plenty of insect prey for the foxes to feast on. They also rely on small mammals, lizards, and birds, as well as some vegetation, such as grasses, desert succulents, and fruits. Small mammals like shrew-like animals that lived during the Mesozoic could provide food for these foxes, and some of the grasses that emerged towards the end of the era could also be considered edible. The greater bilby might also be able to survive on the food that would have been available to them during the Mesozoic. They feed on insects like termites and their larvae, as well as other invertebrates, fruit, and fungi. Finding enough insect prey to sustain them may be difficult, as fruit wouldn't be available during the Mesozoic. If any of these small mammals could survive the climate and diet on offer during the Mesozoic, they would have to adapt their predator evasion tactics. Natural predators for the Rupel's fox are the Step Owl and Eagle Owl. In the Mesozoic era, these aerial predators would likely be replaced with any of the flying reptiles that soared through the skies. Modern house cats and introduced foxes are threats to the greater bilby, but in prehistoric times, these could be some of the small dinosaurs like Copsognathus, which was a similar size to a chicken. These little dinosaurs ate small vertebrates and were thought to have been lightning fast, likely able to outrun a bilby. Although we know that small mammals survived during the Mesozoic with the presence of dinosaurs, including the largest meat-eaters to have ever walked the Earth, we don't believe that larger mammals could survive. Those that were around more than 66 million years ago never grew any bigger than the size of a house cat. It wasn't until the mass extinction of the dinosaurs that mammals were able to proliferate and begin to dominate the landscape. There was a good reason for this. Not only was the climate favorable for mammals, but there were no longer the enormous predators that inhibited their evolution before. In conclusion, we believe that some of today's small mammals could survive the Mesozoic, as their ancestors did before. But as far as the vast array of species occupying a range of niches today, we don't believe that it would be possible during the Mesozoic. There are plenty of things that we haven't considered, such as the atmosphere during the Mesozoic and the effect that 16 times more carbon dioxide would have on modern-day mammals. But looking at their basic needs, some small modern mammals would probably cope. Changes to our world have driven evolution for better or for worse. The mammals that have not been able to adapt to the changing environments have become extinct. Those that have adapted and embraced the changes have gone on to survive, thrive, and evolve creating the plethora of diverse life on Earth that we know today. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.